And I do want to go back to actually the person who addressed the question or asked the question that I kind of address. We'll see if there's any more mileage in this. Uh, it's Samuel and his question relates to whether suicide is a selfish act. Are you with us, Samuel? Uh, yes, I am. Hi. Um, I know that I, I think I took your question from the, the comments. Was there anything um, further that you wanted to add to it? Um, yeah. I just want to say, um, why is it, do you guys have a, well, do you guys have a reason or why it is so prevalent in, um, like, the Western countries? Like, you know, if you go to Africa, their main goal every day is don't die today, don't die today. And what, it's, it's just for a silliest reason, like, being depressed or it's a sort of thing. Like, I've thought about it, you know. Um, sorry if I'm a little... All over place here. I just woke up for this. Um, but you, yeah. Hang on, are you Samuel from Australia? Yes. It's about five o'clock for you, isn't it, in the morning? Uh, 6.30. I woke up at five. Oh, well, you should be okay by now. 6.30, a cup of coffee inside you. I'm sorry, do carry on. Um, uh, is, your, is your point, effectively, why is it in the Western world that suicide rates are higher than they are in, in less developed countries? Yes. Anyone want to comment? Well, I mean, I think you said it all. Um, when people's only concern during the day is actually not starving, uh, you really don't have time to get depressed about um, how you're not socially accepted in your peer group because you don't have Reebok trainers or something. Yeah, an um, iPhone. Yeah, um, exactly. Is it an indictment of, of first world countries or Western society, however you want to describe it, that... Uh, this sort of uh, trivial pressure is put on people, as you say, Reeboks or iPhones or whatever, or not getting a um, sufficient stature in society with the job you've got or something like that. Is that an indictment upon us or is it an inevitable consequence? Is it a consequence we can live with? I mean, I, I would actually go to the other end of this. And that's, um, so yes, it's true that... Uh, uh, society has rendered us a load of social ills that um, our ancestors who were worried about dying of disease and starvation didn't have, uh, a price well worth paying. Um, it's also brought in the problem of, uh, what do we call, assisted suicide, which is where you can be kept alive almost indefinitely by medical science. And there comes a point when uh, it doesn't make you, you don't want to live anymore. And it's just burdening society for you to keep living. And I've seen uh, relatives in this sort of almost living dead state. And, but, and my parents too, who both sort of agreed that uh, there are worse things than death. This is, yeah, for, for the generation of my, my grandparents, the whole deal was you stay alive as long as you possibly can. Um, and now having actually seen what that looks like, that's not a place where I would want to go. Again, I think it raises a very interesting right as to whether someone should have the, um, the right to say uh, exactly how and when uh, they should die. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a, com a total advocate of that uh, position, but in this country, um, assisted suicide uh, is still uh, illegal. Uh, there is a test case going through the courts at the moment um, about a man who, I can't remember the medical term for it, but he, he, he totally paralyzed, uh, unable to talk. His quality of life is absolutely nil. Um, and he wants to die. Uh, and I, I support his right to make that decision. Uh, but at the moment, um, in this country, he, he can't kill himself. Um, so it would have to be someone else to do it for him. Uh, and no one can do that without facing uh, prosecution for murder. But hopefully things may change. Uh, Samuel, was there anything else? Because I've got a number of people like waiting. Um, I just one thing I want to add. If I could, if I could, it'll take about a minute or so. Yeah, go ahead. It's a it's addressed to Thunderfoot. Um, Thunderfoot. This a few years ago now, um, I was what I thought was like when the only atheist in the world, 
because I was in a semi small town um, and I didn't know there was an atheist out there. I didn't even know the term existed. I just didn't believe. Um, and I just happened to be on Psychopedia America one day and Venom Fang X is, um, fe- was the featured article. So like, all right, I'll go on this. And, you know, and basically I found your stuff through it and by watching your stuff, I successfully successfully found out that there was, in fact, other atheists out there, other free thinkers. So for that, I would like to thank you. We do have a rule. If you you brown nose one person, you brown nose us all. But go on. (laughs) Thunder rain against you. Samuel, thank you very much indeed for your call. Uh, I'm going to move straight on, but whilst I do so, I know that Concordance wanted to make a point about um, what we've just been discussed. Concordance, whilst I bring in the next caller. Well, I thought the question was primarily about um, why it is that first world people are more likely to commit suicide. Um, and I, I was recently looking it up. Actually, mental illness is, is not one of the principal causes. Well, it may be one of the principal causes, but it's not as responsible for suicide uh, as you would think because most people with profound mental illness, uh, psychoses, have a hard time even mustering together the the action to do that. I think more commonly it's frustration. So people surrounded by expectations and people achieving wealth um, are more likely to commit suicide. I seem to remember, and I can't recall where I read this, that um, uh, Facebook had an effect on the suicide rates because people are often exposed to other people having a good time. So the kind of things that people put up create a sort of false impression of everyone else in the world is happy, but I'm not, or I'm not achieving my goals and everyone else is. So you get this sort of sense of emptiness inside that I'm not achieving some some key purpose in my life, and therefore my only out is, is to end it. So I, I think that but, might but, be why the third world... If I didn't express it well enough, then uh, let me try again. That's exactly the point that I was seeking to make about, you know, is the responsibility of Western society for putting this sort of, like, uh, guilt trip on people? Is it? Yeah, uh, we, we need to address what the, what the root cause really is, and these expectations that are false. The, the sense of... Um, mm, and exceptionalism, because that's not quite no, the, the right the, term. The, the one that I think really um, uh, crystallizes what, what you're after here is the unrealistic expectations that women have to look a certain way. I mean, right. the images that women are bombarded with are an absolutely impossible standard of, of you know, beauty and style and all that sort of thing. You know, there is, there is no way you can even sort of remotely match to... Um, what the social pressures are are pushing you towards, and I think this this causes a lot of uh, social problems. I don't yeah, think it's exclusive it's to not, women, though, is it? No, it, there's there's programs on you know uh, house hunters where they're they're looking for these million dollar homes, or we watch, you know, nine hundred two one zero. I guess maybe that but dated, but um, you know, very rich people are the ones we watch on TV. Very beautiful people are the ones we watch on TV. You know, I used to watch that before I found internet porn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Thanks for know, sharing, DPL. <laughs> uh, even let's, before, it, before it degenerates, <laughs> record, <laughs> do finish your point and then we'll, we'll, we'll go to William. Even the cooking shows or the home improvement shows are always these really amazing achievements that we're, we're interested in watching because that's what interests us. But then we compare it to our own lives and it's, it seems very wanting. 